is the, uh, the current link, Acharya, of this Krishna consciousness science. Uh, this spiritual movement is to bring complete uh, harmony in this distracted society, this uh, fallen society. Right now, the whole world is in chaos. In case you didn't notice, uh, the whole world is in chaos. Everyone is disturbed. Everyone is in anxiety. Everyone is engaged in working so much. So many hours. Jeez, just right now, we're getting disturbed by this nonsense. Uh, see, you cannot have any peace of mind. Even when you come to the temple, there's nonsense uh, TV blasting, you know, from the neighbors. Uh, so, here, this Krishna consciousness is, is to solve this. Is to, is to stop this disturbance. And establish peace, real peace. What is real peace? If we all serve the Supreme Lord. Uh, Supreme Lord. Then there will be peace. Uh, Krishna is Bhuktaram Yagatapasam Sarvaloka Maheshwaram Sunam Sarvabhutanam Jatvamam uh, Shantim Vachatim Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. Supreme enjoyer. You are not the enjoyer. You cannot enjoy. You try to enjoy, but you cannot enjoy. See, whatever you try to enjoy uh, is blocked by the body, by the senses. Just like we discussed, we have the five senses, right? It's seeing, smelling, and so on, so on. But I'm not the senses. I'm not the body. So if my senses are enjoying very nicely, right? The ear is enjoying sound, the tongue is enjoying food stuff, the, 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 the eye is enjoying some beautiful form, touch, and so on, so on. Uh, I get no pleasure out of it. I'm simply looking, simply observing how my body is interacting, how my senses are enjoying. But I'm aloof. The soul is just like a, a drop of oil in water. They don't mix together. The soul and the body, they don't mix together. Uh, so, this is intelligence. Why should I engage in this bodily, uh, useless, so-called enjoyment. Let me enjoy myself. Myself. Let me have pleasure for myself. This is good selfishness. Spiritual selfishness, you can call it. Uh, so that is done very easily if we engage in the service of Krishna. Devotional service of Krishna. Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam. Hearing, chanting, meditating on Krishna. Like that. And if you serve Krishna uh, because you are part and parcel of Krishna. Uh, you also enjoy. See? You also enjoy. You're, part, you're not separate from Krishna. You're also Krishna. You can say like that. You're also Krishna. But the minute part and parcel of Krishna. Not the whole. Not the whole Krishna. Not the whole God. I am God, I am supreme, I know everything, I have to enjoy it. This whole world is made for my enjoyment. Not like that. Then, this is the cause of our misery, of our suffering. That I'm trying to artificially take the position of Krishna. You see, so, <coughs> now when we speak of this particular verse, Krishna says, Apiche to the racharo, bhajate mamananyabhak, sadur eva samantabhya, samyak vyabhashito hisa. This devotional service is not practiced whimsically. It is it has to be done under the uh, uh, instruction of the spiritual master. It's like if you want to please someone, you have to know what that someone wants. So similarly, if you want to please Krishna, if you want to serve Krishna, then we have to know what pleases Krishna. If we give him something, he's a person. He's an individual. He has his taste, his distaste also. See, just like you have things you like. You like to dress in a particular way. You like particular type of movies. You like particular type of music. If I give you music you don't like, and I say, oh, uh, I'm very good friend because uh, I'm trying to do good to you. Uh, that is not very nice, actually. Just because you have a good intention doesn't mean that it, your action is good. 
See, so we have to inquire what Krishna wants. And therefore, devotional service is practiced under the instruction of the spiritual master. This is the beginning of Krishna consciousness. Any respectable gentleman must have a spiritual master. If he doesn't have a spiritual master, he's like a ship without a, a rudder. See? No direction. Spiritual master gives you a direction. Uh, so, uh, now in the discharge of devotional service, sometimes uh, there is some fall down, some weakness, some temporary exhibition of worldliness. Uh, so now, what happens very often is that uh, we become a little proud, just like the gopis. And the gopis, they thought, oh, we're the most fortunate women in the whole universe because Krishna is dancing in our midst. So they became a little proud. The gopis are the highest class of devotees. Highest, topmost class of devotees. Completely pure. Uh, completely pure. These relationships on the spiritual platform, Krishna and the gopis, is the most difficult subject matter. Most difficult. Once you're not indulging these discussions, unless he's completely purified from material lust. Uh, so, even they, they became a little proud. And when it happened, Krishna disappeared to teach them a lesson. <laughs> teach them a lesson. Similarly, uh, while practicing Krishna consciousness, uh, there are sometimes we become proud. We become proud. Oh, I'm so pure. I'm a saintly person. See? If you engage in this process of Krishna consciousness, then people will very much respect you. See? You're just like a, a ray of light in the darkness. You become just like a ray of light in darkness. See? This society, this time, is very dark. No, no etiquettes. People have no good behavior. No etiquettes. Nothing. No compassion. No proper behavior. Nothing. 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 Simply like animals. Gratifying the senses. I'm the body. I'm the senses. Now let me gratify even to the extent of someone pushing someone down. Uh, so many animals are killed simply for the satisfaction of the tongue. Right? So many children are, are killed in the womb for the satisfaction of some insignificant sex life. Uh, you see? So this world is very dark, actually. Very dark. So when you become uh, a Krishna conscious devotee, uh, then immediately people, they will try to grab, oh, there's some light there. There's some saint, but there's some goodness. People will gather and they will be attracted to you. So then I can become forgetful. Oh, actually, yes, I'm a very saintly person. I'm a very, very nice devotee, I'm very pure. And we become forgetful why, why we have become devotees. Uh, because the spiritual master has come down to this rotten place. Because Krishna is giving us this knowledge. See, everything in Krishna consciousness is based on the mercy, prasadam. So it is to be prasadam. The mercy is not a right. Prasadam is not the right that I come and I give donation in a temple and now I have a right to abuse the temple facility and boss around the devotees. Give me this, give me that. I have a right, I have paid my fees. No! No, Krishna doesn't need your fees, your money, your donation, nothing. Nothing. That is for your benefit. Yes. Uh, we have stolen from Krishna. Everything, whatever you can think of, is the property of Krishna. Sarva Loke Maheshwaram. 
What is this insignificant money, insignificant Montreal, insignificant Canada, insignificant Earth? He is the master of all the universes, Krishna. He is the proprietor. So, if we give something to Krishna, out of our free will, not by force, not by intimidation, uh, come on, donate, give some money. Not like that, no. With the understanding, yes, Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He has given me so much. He has given me the light, He has given me the sun, the food stuff, everything. Uh, even the money, where is the money coming from? It is, it is an exchange uh, uh, to gold. An exchange with gold. So who has manufactured gold? A materialistic scientist? He has manufactured gold? No! Krishna has created gold. You have taken the gold at one point and you have made money. And now you're giving me money for my labor. He's cheating. Gold Krishna has given to everyone. Why you have stolen from Krishna? Huh? You see? So it is for our benefit that we give to Krishna. So we can we can become purified. Krishna is taking charge of his devotees. You don't have to worry. He's taking charge of the birds and the beasts, even Lord Jesus Christ, he says this. So if you uh, surrender to Krishna, if you give something to Krishna from your heart with love and devotion, <coughs> then Krishna will take full charge of all your necessities. So now, when that happens, why should not become proud, as I mentioned before? Uh, in India, this is very much prominent. This bogus, I repeat, bogus, completely bogus caste system. Caste system. What is a caste system? Uh, I'm born in a family of a Brahmin. I call myself a Brahmin. Qualification zero. Zero. Uh, and still, I profess to be a Brahmin. Uh, so, how shall Prabhupada? How nicely he has uh, exposed these false rascals. He has come to the West and he has made the Brahmins out of lunches, out of the Western people. Western people. They should not be proud. In India, they're considered to be very low class. Very low class. At least in India, there is some culture. Just like you mentioned, that you're missing the culture here from India. Um, so, um, uh, in the West, there's no culture. There's no culture. No one even understands the transmigration of the soul. There's a little understanding. Thanks to the great Mahajans like Jesus Christ and Prophet Muhammad. They're also Mahajans. These people are foolish who say that Muhammad and this and that it was this accident, right? The Charlie Hebdo uh, uh, incident. So people think, ah, oh, this is Muhammad religion, this is some fanaticism. No! It's a bona fide religion. They have actually offended a, a, a pure devotee, Prophet Muhammad. So they should not be surprised that the Muslim brothers, they're angry. Uh, they should not be surprised. Uh, it's a great insult to uh, Prophet Muhammad. So, in India, what is this, this uh, what is it called? The Bolly, Bollywood? Bollywood, all this rubbish, nonsense, nothing to do with Krishna consciousness. Don't be misled. Don't be misled. This is completely demonic, demonic. So Sri Prabhupada has created uh, Western Brahmins to smash this idea of caste system. That simply because I'm born in a particular family, particular Bamsha, I'm automatically Brahminically seen. That is a good asset, yes. You're born in a Brahmin family, very good. But now you have to take initiation from the spiritual master and be trained in the practice of Krishna consciousness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not an easy, flimsy, this and that, whimsical job. It's a great science. One has to follow 
certain rules and regulations. A Brahmin he has to follow certain rules and regulations. The first topmost regulation is that you will never accept service like a dog, Shudra, oh, please give me a job. No. That is not a Brahmin. That is a Shudra. A Brahmin is always independent in his livelihood. Why? Because his Brahmin realizes, he understands, yes, I am maintained by God. Now I will simply, yes, Brahmin is six duties. He studies the Shastra, he teaches the Shastra. He's worshipping the deity, he's teaching how to worship the deity. He is accepting charity, he's distributing the charity. This is a Brahmin.